we get a lot of questions on how to create financial tables in PowerPoint. Even though it looks simple, it's actually quite complex due to the rigid structure. This tutorial video consists of two main chapters. I will soon teach you the basics of creating a financial table in PowerPoint using Grunt. But first, let's explain some key learnings we've had while working with hundreds of financial tables. And of course, if you don't want to learn any new theory, I recommend that you skip ahead. We held a webinar on best practices within financial reporting in PowerPoint. I will link to that video in the description below. Let's start by looking at the clip from that webinar, where my colleague Alexander is the host. Now let's have a look at financial tables. Uh, your reports will invariably contain financial tables, um, and that's fine, but remember that financial tables are for the details oriented. Uh, don't place them in the main section uh, of your presentation. Instead, choose a good visualization of your most important KPIs and stick the financial tables in an appendix. Uh, Grunt is great for automating updates of financial tables in your presentation, and my colleague Mads will show you a demo of that shortly. Let's look at some more examples. This is a pretty bad table. The use of colors here is, is completely off. Um, don't, don't highlight rows. Highlight the current period. To highlight rows, use, uh, use lines instead. This one is not too bad from a visual perspective. However, it's, it's too wide. Uh, that makes it hard to compare and contrast. Uh, it also lacks highlighting. Again, there are some problems here. The current quarter is not highlighted. Some numbers are emphasized, but there are no, ex no comments explaining why. Uh, and the image quality is also pretty bad. And it's obvious that th this image was copied from Excel. You should avoid this kind of workflow and we'll show you how later. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. This is a pretty good slide. The current period is highlighted. There are no unnecessary decimals. The important rows are highlighted using lines rather than the background color. Um, and the numbers are close enough together that you can compare them easily. Uh, finally, the comments to the right are short and to the point. We have developed best practices when it comes to financial tables, and I'll link to these in the description below. Here you can find some main pointers, and also a slide with do's and don'ts. Now, let me demonstrate how you can create financial tables in PowerPoint using Grunt. I will mainly explain how to create a financial table from scratch, but we also have some templates you can use as a starting point. You can open the template gallery, search for financial table, and choose one of the alternatives. The table will be inserted with data living inside of PowerPoint. If you want to connect this table to Excel, you can click the establish Excel connection button to your right. Choose an open Excel book, and Grunt will push the data into Excel, and from this point onwards, you can work with Grunt and Excel as you normally do. Now let me explain how you can create a financial table from scratch. Starting with data in Excel, copy and paste that data into PowerPoint. The table shows up without any styling, and we'll fix that soon. First, double-click the first column to set it to automatic size. Then, select the first two rows, Right click and set the type to head row. Do the same for the first column. Next, select all the cells and add a font rule. This way we can reduce the font size to eight points. Now select the similar cells in the top row and merge them together by adding a merge rule. I prefer to do this in two steps, once for the current period and once for year to date. With the cells merged, we can select the individual cells and apply a specific fill color. For numbers in my financial table, I prefer to keep them right aligned. So let's select all the content columns, add an alignment rule and specify right alignment. Then I'll center align my merged cells by selecting the first row, adding an alignment rule and specifying center alignment. With alignment fixed, it's time to adjust my gaps. Currently, these are too wide. So to fix that, I select my dividers, set the width to fixed, and choose six points. For the main divider, I want it to be slightly wider, so I choose 16 points. 
To further improve the header style, select the second row and add another font rule. Specify a bold font weight and choose a different color. Now it's time to add some borders and improve my styling, but before I move on, I want to talk about how you can do this in the most dynamic way possible. The reason why this is important is because if your structure keeps changing, it might be tedious to update the formatting manually. Our solution for this is called tags. Tags is a way to name parts of a table, and you can later use this name if you want to change the formatting. To add a new tag, select your total row, click the tag button to the right, and input the name for the tag. I'll use total row in this example. Now, with this row selected, let's add a border rule. I will control click on the bottom border to only specify that, and I'll change the color. Notice that this border is applied to the tag that we created. If I also add the head rows, those will get a border as well. Finally, to make things look cleaner, remove the border from all dividers. And you can do this by adding an empty columns target in the exclusion list. Now we also have to style subtotal rows and we're gonna use the same process with tags. So let me first select a single subtotal row and I create a new tag called subtotal row. Then we add a border rule with a slightly thinner thickness and we choose a nice color. We can also add a font rule to set the subtotal rows to be bold. Here comes the beauty with tags, because if I now go into the tag and change what part of the table the tag points to, the formatting will update for all these new parts. So we can add row 7, 12 and 15 and you notice that the formatting updates. We also want to add some shading for the current period and it's perhaps no surprise that we're going to use tags for that as well. So let me select these two columns, add a new tag and type in current period. Now we can add a shading to that tag by using a fill rule and choosing a gray shading. I don't want shading for my first row, so I'll also exclude that. Here at the end, I also want to comment on number formatting, because when I pasted my table into PowerPoint, my default settings were applied. If I right click on my visual grid, I can choose date and number format from the context menu. And here I can select a different region. This would change the way my numbers are displayed with a different thousand separator and a different decimal separator. If you want even greater control, you could also apply a number format rule to specify all the details for your number formatting as precisely as you need. Finally, if you're happy with your financial table, which I hope you are, you can always right click on the table and choose save as template. This will populate your template gallery so it's easy to insert the template later on. That's all for now, see you next time.